Welcome back to Arthritis Now. I'm your host, Kyle Langan, and today we're going to be talking to Dr. Craig Walsh from the University of California, Irvine, and his work in autoimmune research. Hi, Dr. Walsh. Thank you very much for being on Arthritis Now with us. We really appreciate it. What is your, your background? Did you, um, I guess, what kind of, what made you want to go into autoimmune research? So I started out, I've always been very interested in, in T cells. And um, as you know, T cells are very important for a lot of different types of autoimmune disease. Um, and as a graduate student, I was interested in how T cells, certain class of T cells are involved in getting rid of virus infection, getting rid of uh, tumors, uh, what are called cytotoxic T-cells. So they, if they recognize this bad stuff, they basically kill it. And I was interested in how that process worked. Um, and then with an interest in, in terms of how that process worked, I then started looking into um, an area called immune tolerance. The idea that your immune system has to be able to recognize not just the bad stuff, but also not recognize your own body. And so given the fact that uh, um, we have these intricate mechanisms that are involved in that process, I got really excited about that. And that's something that I've been working on for, you know, about 20 years, something like that. In layman's terms, can you kind of explain what the focus of your research is now? Sure. Uh, so we work on immune tolerance, trying to understand how it is that our body's T cells that are normally involved in, in killing off viruses and detecting tumors um, how, how that same immune system doesn't go out of control and, and cause a bunch of collateral damage. And normally that's the case. You don't get a lot of the collateral damage. But if the immune system um, loses control, then the result is that you can get this collateral damage. Oftentimes that results in, in an autoimmune disease like, like uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And so you were funded by the Arthritis National Research Foundation in 2002. Um, how has your research kind of evolved or changed since, since then? When we first started the lab, um, not long after that, I was able to get a, a nice uh, research grant from Arthritis National Research Foundation that was really focused on basic mechanisms of T cells um, and how they are involved in autoimmune disease. And since that time, I think we've taken a little bit more of a holistic approach and trying to understand uh, autoimmunity, not just with respect to the T cells, but also some of the other the cells that are involved and, and more recently we've been getting very excited about um, interactions between T cells of the immune system and certain stem cell derivatives that are involved in tissue repair. And it's really that, that interplay, I think, between you know, the immune system and the repair cells that, that kind of sets the balance for whether um, you're going to have a, an autoimmune disease or whether you can treat an autoimmune disease. And so is, it, is your work focused on autoimmunity in general, or is it kind of, do you target like one specific disease um, at all? Well, we have a um, very strong focus in recent years on, on multiple sclerosis. So we do a lot of work trying to understand the basis for multiple sclerosis, what happens to the immune system, uh, in particular in T cells, that leads to MS, and more recently, what are some approaches that we can, we can come in and, and actually treat that. And you know, our thinking now is that really we, we can't just look at the T cell side of things. We also have to look at the, the, uh, the repair cells that, that need to be there. Um, in order to be able to not simply get rid of the, the underlying autoimmune disease, but also to allow for the, the tissue to repair itself and, and to, to heal the, um, uh, a lot of the problems that are associated with that particular autoimmune disease. So a lot of the focus lately has been on MS, but we're certainly interested um, in type 1 diabetes. We're certainly interested in, in rheumatoid arthritis as well. And when I was reading up on, on some of your research, your early research, you had identified a gene called DRAK2, um, and that... I guess it, in, it inhibited inflammatory responses in the joints. So can you tell me a little bit more about that and how you kind of like discovered it and, and what your findings were with that? So uh, we, we call it DRAC2. It's, DRAC2. it's kind of a, not a very attractive name, but that's, that's what we call it. <laughs> um, and, and basically what it is, is it's, a, uh, it's a, a signaling molecule. So all of our cells have intracellular signaling in order to control their behavior. Uh, this particular molecule um, is an enzyme that is also involved in this sort of intracellular signaling. And in particular, it's, it's very important for regulation of T cells, whether those T cells are going to become 
activated and, and do their job of getting rid of virus infection, what have you. Uh, but, but what's really interesting about DRAC2 is that um, it seems to play an important role in the process of, of inflammation. And in particular, in certain um, autoimmune contexts, if you eliminate its function, and we've done that genetically as well as pharmacologically, the result of that is that those, those autoreactive T cells that are causing damage, they actually die off early. So we're trying to understand more about how the, this DRAC2 molecule works, how we can potentially inhibit it pharmacologically, and then be able to use that for organ-specific autoimmune diseases. Thanks for watching part one of our interview with Dr. Craig Walsh. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out at curearthritis.org for all the latest information on the foundation. And share this video on Facebook and Twitter to help raise arthritis awareness.